Every morning the wake-up call rings. And technology has given us this great gift called snooze. In Manorama style, you can go on saying, Gamunagada, Gamunagada. And after every 10 minutes, it will beg you again. Can you wake up? Can you wake up? Again, snooze it and go to sleep. So every morning, for all of us, we wake up and then we get up. Waking up is when you hear that sound and we go back to sleep. It rings, we go back to sleep. Between that waking up and getting up, there is this small gap in which World War III happens. <laughs> and suddenly your mind supplies you with a lot of idea. You are tired. You went to sleep late. You need rest. Some article which you read 14 years ago, you need minimum so many hours of sleep. That time only it will all come to your head. <laughs> sweetheart, sweetheart, do you realize your mind is playing games with you? I can understand if your mind is playing games with others. It's playing game with you. And for many of us, who made the decision previous day, next day I'll get up. I'm not still telling you Brahma Muhurt, early man. Whatever, that those of you get up 6.30, 7, some of you that early afternoon, 8 o'clock. <laughs> early afternoon, 8 o'clock, they set up a wake-up call and get up. Sun is coming and frying his ass. How he manages to sleep, I don't know. Some DNA transfer from Kumbhagarna has happened. You decide the time. But you should conquer that gap. Not for my sake. Not because the program is called Dhanacharya. Please understand what is happening to you. For all the potential all of us have, we should be living a legendary life why many people don't live a legend life? What is our problem? Our problem is this. When you want to wake up at 6.30 and you're not able to wake up at 6.30, a lot of people get, all of you are inside. See, we are all of this category. When a system helps us, we like the system. So all of you are inside, program exactly started on time, so you're all very, very nice. So with infinity is a mahatriya. No, the program always starts on time. One day if you're late, this is not a good system. See, people have to be practical. See, the traffic and other things, parking is not there. He cannot expect everybody to come and we are all like that. When the same system victimizes you, it's a wrong system. When flight takes off on time, it's very nice airlines. When you get delayed and you run to the counter and they say gate is closed, you start talking about customer service, customer support, you should not take immediately because now you miss the flight. No, so it's a wrong system. When you go on right, when somebody else in the neighboring house has bribed and done some deviation by which his window and your window or you can put your hand inside his house, that is wrong. But when you want to have deviation and you find somebody will take bribe and approve your plan, Allah manisha. He just took something and did the job for me. So we are all like that. So today you are all here and program has started on time. It's a good system. What you don't know is what's happening outside. Some of them are cursing me with bad words. <laughs> they are shouting at me. They are saying we'll take him to task. Let's see in future how he is doing a program. One minister will be there who would not have been allowed. Nobody, even prime minister of the country will not be allowed inside my program if he comes late. <laughs> You can put me in jail also if you want. But I will not allow a latecomer inside my program. That's very clear. Why Mahatreya? There is a reason. When a police dog is trained, and after it is disciplined, you can leave the police dog without a leash. It knows what to do with its freedom. Because it has been disciplined so much, it will not abuse that freedom. If you take an ordinary dog and remove the leash, it licks it. Because it does not know what to do with its freedom. When the train is running on the track, enjoying its enormous freedom, disciplined by the track, there is value to the train. It's called bullet train. When it leaves the track and runs, <laughs> there's no value to that freedom. When the river is running within the banks, 
everybody benefits. When it goes outside the banks, it's called floods, it's destructive. We all know, who knows better than us? When that beach comes up to this and goes back, <laughs> we all go and stand there. One day it decided to come, <laughs> called tsunami. When that kite is flying there, disciplined by the thread at this end, in the discipline, the kite is The moment the discipline goes, that freedom has no value. It is just a piece of paper. It's not a kite anymore. For all the potential India has, if for 10 years we can discipline this country, we got freedom without getting disciplined. For a typical Indian, freedom is he can piss wherever he wants. That's freedom. That's abuse of freedom. For 10 years, if we can discipline this country and then give it the freedom, we will not know what to do with the freedom. Right now, we are abusing the freedom because we have never been disciplined enough. And part of my exercise to restore this country to greatness is all my programs have to start on time. Latecomer will not be allowed. I don't care who it is. And latecomer will not be allowed is not my way of disrespecting a latecomer, gentlemen. Latecomer will not be allowed inside the program is my way of showing respect to all of you who come on time. If people can come whenever they want and sit and he will be a VIP. Most of the latecomers are VIPs. He will not come and carefully sit there. He has to sit in the front row. And by the time he comes and does all this and people have... The whole flow of the program will be disturbed. So it has to start on time. I make my request to people. There is a reason behind it. When you cannot come for a 10.30 program at 10, by 10.30, you decide the previous night you want to wake up at 7 o'clock and 7 o'clock the wake up call rings and you're not able to wake up. You snooze and snooze and wake up at 7.20. At the outset, it seems nothing is happening. But tremendous damage is happening. So when you set a goal saying that, I'll build a hundred crore organization, your own mind doubts you. Potential is there, but your own mind doubts you. You know how it doubts you? You can't even get up at seven o'clock when you want to get up at seven o'clock. You will achieve hundred crores. You can't even go to a place at 10.30 when you have to be there at 10.30. You think you'll achieve at 10 crores. You know what your mind is asking you? If you can't even control what you can control, how are you going to achieve things which are beyond your control? <laughs> if the enemy is outside, you can be helped. If the enemy is inside, how can you be helped? Somebody is carrying a knife and chasing you to stab, I can come in between and save you. Of course, if you're worth it. <laughs> you're carrying a knife and running to stab yourself. Who can help you? When the enemy is outside, all these speeches will help you. When the enemy is inside, even he cannot help you. So when your mind starts doubting you, and it doubts you, when you say, I will come by 7 o'clock and you're not able to come by 7 o'clock, it doubts you. When you want to wake up at a time and you cannot wake up at a time, it doubts you. And over a period of time, we build a lot of subconscious doubts and so much subconscious doubts that we have built. Now when you want to achieve something very big in life, even if everybody around you believes you can, your own insight doubts you and asks you this question. That you can't even get up at a time at which you want to get up. You think you will be able to achieve all this. And when your mind has doubted you, there's no, even if everybody believes you, but if your own subconscious does not believe in you, you're not going anywhere in life. Even if nobody believes you, but if your subconscious is, is ready to believe in you, even God cannot stop you from achieving what you want to achieve in life. And you build this subconscious belief. How do I build this subconscious belief? By making a commitment and honoring a commitment. By making a promise and living by the promise, my own subconscious, anything. You tell, have you told your child before coming to this program, child said, Appa, I will also come. You wanted to leave the child and come. 
you don't want the child to hear that Mahatriya called you Duryodhana of a different degree. So you left the child and came. And you told the child, when I come back, I'll get you chocolates. You are not going home without those chocolates. You made a promise, you will live up to that promise. You will live up to that promise. You told your parents tomorrow morning you are going to take them to the temple because tonight you will be practicing liquid spirituality and tomorrow solid spirituality. <laughs> but somewhere, nth round, uh, your head weight went up. But because you made a commitment to your parents, you will take them to the temple tomorrow. No matter what happens, you will take them to the temple tomorrow. <laughs> you made a commitment and you will honor this commitment. If when I was telling you that the next 365 days, no matter what happens, you will obey the traffic laws and your head is nodded, no matter what. Not for my sake. You live through that for one year, your subconscious belief goes up. From starting tomorrow, every day, you decide this is the time I will wake up and get up. Conquer that gap. Sleepy, sleepy, go. But get out of the bed. Get out. Draw the body, crawl, but get out. And within a few days, you'll find your own subconscious belief is making you believe in yourself. And you, it'll be stunning to see the sort of results you will be able to produce. Small changes that in transformation domain, there is nothing called small transformation. Every small change held long enough, it's a monumental transformation. Begin from where you can begin. Begin somewhere. 